New rules often introduce exciting new race cars. In the late 1960s, the CSI announced that unlimited displacement would be capped at 5 liters to regulate the ever faster Le Mans cars, such as the unstoppable 7 liter 4 GT40. It mandated a set of 50 production cars to be produced, later lowered to 25, which was exactly what Porsche needed to spark interest and to replace the 907 with something purpose built with such a power. While others at Porsche were still undecided, Hans Metzger wouldn't wait and immediately grasp the task. It required a completely new approach by designing an all-new power plant. No 6 or 8 cylinder was deemed suitable. Metzger began sketching around the most intricate aspect of the engine, the crankshaft. The Porsche Type 912 engine represented a brand new 12 cylinder design with a completely novel architecture. While the flat layout and air cooling were established features from the outset, the engineering team was well aware of the design challenges involved. Hans Metzger, as the head engineer, developed a flat valve crankshaft with non-split journals, which diverged from Porsche's typical approach to flat engines. This innovative design only required 8 main bearings, as opposed to the 14 that a Boxer 12 would necessitate, reducing the risk of poor lubrication and friction. This also allowed for wider bearing surfaces, enhancing overall reliability. The crankshaft was notably shorter, making the engine more compact, and it is often referred to as a 180-degree V12 engine. This non-boxer configuration simplified the engine's mechanical complexity, considering the number of cylinders. Building on past experiences, where an enlarged 8 cylinder from the 6 cylinder suffered from significant vibrations on the valve train side, Metzger positioned the drivetrain in the middle, and all the necessary accessories were driven through gears and shafts from there, including the cooling fan, oiling, ignition, and fuel system. The crankshaft was placed in a magnesium crankcase, which was topped by two cast aluminum double o red cam heads. Each cylinder featured two large hollow sodium filled valves and twin spark plugs to ensure exceptional reliability. The valve angle was also shallower compared to the 908, even though the heads shared a similar construction. Interestingly, the engine required much lower oil pressure than initially expected. Using the same cylinder configuration, it resulted in a 45 litre displacement with some reserve capacity for any additional volume needed. Initially, it produced 520 horsepower at 8000 rpm, along with 450 Nm of torque at 6000 rpm, and it reached speeds exceeding 210 miles per hour. However, despite its incredible strength and reliability, it was discovered to be uncontrollable at high speeds due to the rear end design, which generated no downforce and in fact produced quite a bit of lift. This issue had to be addressed later in a winter. In the first few years, the chassis was refined and the car secured first and second places overall in the 1970 and 1971 24 hours of Le Mans, in addition to various other endurance racing victories. Rear aero modifications were made to improve the handling, as the rear end generated significant lift instead of downforce. Subsequently, 4.9 liter and 5 liter versions were developed, delivering up to 600 horsepower. Porsche had no interest in racing in a low 3 lead class shared with F1 engine manufacturers, thanks to the displacement equivalency. Instead, they ventured overseas to explore the full potential of the 917 platform. While the KNM series appeared promising, the car was significantly underpowered. Given the more relaxed regulations, the first decision was to produce a large engine, although the team finished 4th overall with just 530 horsepower.
makes the central place valve train. The engine architecture was very forgiving in terms of vibrations, and Metzger was able to add more cylinders, creating an incredible flight 16 cylinder capable of producing excess of 800 horsepower at 8,300 rpm. The displacement could be scaled from 6 liters to 7.2 liters. The architecture was essentially the same as the 12 cylinder version, with a crankshaft featuring shared rod rollers, resulting in a flat 16 or 180 degree V16 configuration instead of a boxer. However, the car required a longer wheelbase version that was 80 kilograms heavier, and on top of that, Drivers did not favor the handling of the new 16 cylinder 917. Mark Donahue, who tested the car, described it as a monster and believed it had the potential to produce up to 2000 horsepower with turbocharging. He noted you can hear one part of the engine start up before the other. Porsche created four running examples, and two of them still exist, yet, it never actually participated in racing. After the remarkable achievement of designing such a masterpiece of an engine, Porsche took a step back from the project. However, they didn't completely withdraw from the Can-Am series. They decided that turbocharging the 12 cylinder engine from the 917-10 was a more straightforward approach and didn't require significant modifications to the car. The engine was fitted with twin large turbochargers and in 1972, it quickly surpassed the 1000 horsepower mark with mild boom. For the 1973 season, Porsche elevated their efforts. They utilized a 5.4 liter engine that delivered nearly 1600 horsepower in a qualification trim. With significantly optimized aerodynamics, the 917-30 won 6 out of 8 races and dominated the series to such an extent that the rules had to be modified and interest among US spectators waned. It was the only non-Chevrolet powered car to win this American championship. Mark Donahue was able to reach speeds of 221 miles per hour at the Talladega Super Speedway, and its estimated top speed was 240 miles per hour. It's worth noting that these cars had substantial fuel consumption, equipped with a large 330 liter fuel tank, and consuming fuel at a rate of 85 liters per 100 kilometers, about 2.75 miles per gallon. At the time, the Porsche 917-30 was the most powerful car ever built and raced. It represented Porsche's most ambitious project. Notably, prior to the 917-30 and excluding the 1948 Cis Italia Type 360, which never even raced, the Porsche Type 912 stood out as the first flat valve engine that actually competed and demonstrated its capabilities on the racetrack. The regulation requiring the production of 25 cars sparked interest in the development of the 917s, which was initially challenging to handle at high speeds. Tragically, it resulted in the death of an inexperienced driver, John Wolfe. However, continuous improvements and refinements ultimately led to the creation of one of the most renowned vintage race cars in the history.